pumping of the blood allows blood to flow to all parts of the body. For this to occur efficiently, pressure is generated due to the muscular contraction of the atria and the ventricles of the heart. Let's look at how this happens. Both the atria contract together and empty blood into the ventricles. The ventricles then contract simultaneously, forcing blood into the arteries that will direct the blood to different parts of the body. Both the atria and ventricles briefly relax before the cycle repeats. When the ventricles contract, blood pressure is relatively high. This is called the systolic pressure. When the ventricles relax, blood pressure is relatively low. This is called diastolic pressure. A stethoscope and sphygmomanometer is routinely used to measure blood pressure. The different sounds of the blood flow through the brachial artery correspond to the contraction and relaxation of the heart. Systolic pressure is measured by applying pressure to the brachial artery through the inflation of the sphygmomanometer's cuff. The pressure in the cuff is then slowly released. As it descends, it reaches a point where blood is able to spurt with each pulse through the constricted artery. This creates a tapping sound. This spurting only occurs when blood pressure is at its highest, which is during ventricular contraction. Diastolic pressure is measured after continuing to let the air out of the cuff. The first moment when sounds are no longer audible indicates that the blood is now flowing continuously through the artery. This gives us the diastolic pressure. Diastolic pressure occurs when the ventricles relax. Posture and proper cuff placement is important when measuring blood pressure. If the patient is not seated in a relaxed position with the arm level to the heart, the blood pressure reading can be artificially high. Also, if the blood pressure cuff is too loose, the blood pressure reading will be artificially high as well. The patient should be seated with their feet flat on the floor. The patient should ideally rest quietly for five to 10 minutes before beginning. The forearm should be relaxed with the palm facing upward, resting on a table or desk that allows the arm to be around heart level. Next, locate the brachial artery pulse by gently placing your index and middle fingers on the inside of the elbow. Look for an arrow or line on the blood pressure cuff that should be lined up with or point to the pulse from the brachial artery. Wrap the cuff around the upper arm so that it's snug but not too tight. A good rule of thumb is you should be able to slip one finger under the blood pressure cuff but not two. The cuff should have direct contact with the skin. The bottom of the cuff should be about one inch above the crease of the inner elbow. The stethoscope is then placed over the spot where you are able to feel the pulse on the brachial artery. Locate the valve which can be found near the mouth of the bulb. Close the valve by turning the screw in a clockwise direction. Then squeeze the bulb quickly to inflate the cuff until the indicator is around 200 millimeters of mercury. Using the stethoscope, Listen carefully for the first audible sound as you slowly release air from the blood pressure cuff by turning the screw counterclockwise. At the same time, carefully watch the gauge and record the readings for the first audible sound and for when the sound stops. The first audible sound is the systolic pressure, which is the top number of blood pressure. When the sound is no longer audible, this gives us the diastolic pressure, which is the bottom number of the blood pressure. Welcome to the Blood Pressure Virtual Laboratory. In this laboratory, we will investigate what factors affect the likelihood of hypertension. The risk factors for high blood pressure that this lab will investigate are as follows. Being overweight or obese, age and gender, lack of exercise, high salt diet, alcohol consumption, and family history. The objectives of this lab are to investigate the effect of age and gender on group blood pressure averages and to determine the major risk factors of hypertension. Blood pressure measurements are always expressed by two numbers, the systolic pressure over the diastolic pressure. The blood pressure cuff is inflated until the air pressure within the cuff exceeds the blood pressure in the artery of the arm. 
This causes the artery to collapse, temporarily shutting down blood flow. Then, pressure in the cuff is slowly reduced until air pressure in the cuff becomes less than the pressure in the artery, allowing blood to flow through the artery once again. The pressure inside the artery, when blood begins to flow, is called systolic pressure. When air pressure in the cuff is reduced further, blood flows more freely. The pressure in blood vessels, when blood is allowed to flow freely, is called diastolic pressure. To start the experiment, select a gender by clicking and holding down the arrow under gender. Then, select an age range to test by clicking and holding down the arrow under age range. Ten patients will appear with sphygmomanometers. Click the measure blood pressure button to take the blood pressure. Each patient's systolic and diastolic blood pressures will appear next to him or her. To see the medical history chart of any patient, click on the patient. Examine the medical history chart of any patient whose blood pressure indicates hypertension or who has a significantly higher reading than others in the group. Find the average systolic and diastolic pressures for each group. Record your data in a data table. When you are done collecting your table, look at the data and see if you can find any trends. Then answer the questions for the virtual lab. Here we have our first data set. This data set includes blood pressure information for females between the ages of 11 and 17 years. None of our subjects suffer from hypertension, but we can explore the medical charts of a few of them that have elevated numbers. Let's calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. We find that the average systolic pressure for this group is 116.8. Be sure to record this in your data table. Now, we'll calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group and record our results. Click Reset to bring up the next group. For our next data set, let's choose males between the ages of 11 and 17. Then click Measure Blood Pressure. Calculate the average systolic pressure. Enter this value in your data table. Now calculate the diastolic average for this group. Record this value in your table. We find that nobody in this group is hypertensive, but we can check out a couple of patient charts. Let's pull up the next group. This time, we'll choose females between the ages of 18 and 24 and take their blood pressure. Calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. Add this value to your data table. Now calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group. Be sure to record your data. Let's go ahead and try our next group. Let's do males between 18 and 24 years of age. Take their blood pressure and calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. And record this data in our data table. Now, find the average diastolic pressure for this group. And record the data as well. For our next group, we will do females between the ages of 25 and 34 and take their blood pressure. Let's calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. And record this value in our data table. Let's calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group. and add this number to our data table. Next, we'll look at males between the ages of 25 and 34. We see a couple of patients are hypertensive and we can look at their medical record. Let's calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. And add this value to our data table. Calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group and record your data. 
Next, we'll look at females between the ages of 35 and 44. We see a couple patients that are hypertensive, and we can look at their medical records here. Let's calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. And add this value to our data table. Now we'll calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group. And add that value to our data table as well. Next, we'll look at males between the ages of 35 and 44. We have a couple of patients that are hypertensive, and we can look at their medical record to see what risk factors they may have. Calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. Let's record our data. Now we'll calculate the average diastolic pressure for this group and add that value to our data table. Next, we'll explore the values for females between the ages of 45 and 64. We see a few patients here that are hypertensive. We can get more information on each patient by looking at the medical record. Let's calculate the average systolic pressure for this group. Let's record that value in our data table. Likewise, we will calculate the diastolic average for this group and add that value to our data table as well. Our last group is the males between 45 and 64 years of age. We see several that are hypertensive and we can glance at their medical record to see what risk factors they may have. Let's calculate the diastolic average for this group and put this in our data table. Last, let's calculate the systolic average for this group and add that to our data table. Now that we have all of our data, we can go ahead and look for trends between age, gender, and hypertension.